everybody, it's Allison here again today for another partial chair yoga class. So today we are going to be using our chair, our mat, and our wall. So make sure that you have a wall nearby. We're going to be using it um, quite a bit in our class today. Um, and we'll go ahead and get started. So with that, being said, all of that out of the way, we'll go ahead and find the top of your mat. Find your feet placed on the mat beneath you. Pick up the toes, feel the arches lift, especially feeling those arches lift in like a almost exaggerated way. Pick up the arches and then set the toes back down, feeling the arch like peel up off of the mat beneath you. And then pressing down into the feet, Go ahead and stand up tall through the legs, stand up tall through the torso, shoulders roll back and down, palms find beside you facing forward, and the crown of the head reaches up towards the sky. And finding this nice tall spine, our Tadasana, our mountain pose, we're going to take just three really full deep breaths here, sighing them out of the mouth each time. So go ahead and take a big deep breath in and sigh it out through the mouth. Getting rid of any stale energy. Good, inhale. And exhale through the mouth. One more, big breath in. And sigh it out. Good, finding our normal breath in and out through the nose. Go ahead, inhale, bring the arms up overhead. And exhale, let the hands come back down. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale up. And exhale down. One more. Inhale. And exhale. Good. All right. We're going to go ahead and take our full body flow here. Inhale as we bring the arms up. And exhale, forward fold, coming through heart center all the way down, bending those knees as much as you need to to come down. Good. Inhale, halfway lift, hands to the sh the, th the shins or the thighs, or the shines, if you blend those words together. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, roll up, reach up. Take your time all the way up overhead. Exhale, palms to heart center. Right. Inhale, arms reach. Exhale, forward fold all the way down, being gentle with your back. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, rolling up, reaching up. Big inhale. And exhale, palms to heart center. Good, we'll do that one more time. Inhale. And exhale, all the way down. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Good. Inhale, rolling up, reaching up. Arms raise up overhead and exhale as the palms come down to heart center. Good. All right. We're going to roll a little bit through our wrists here just for a moment. And then we're going to take it over to the wall. So you got your wrists a little bit warmed up. We're going to come over to the wall and we're going to stand in front of the wall facing the wall bring our hands to the wall and we've done this in class i think once or twice keeping the the wrists right at your shoulder height we're going to start by pressing all 10 fingers down into the wall really firmly feeling every part of the finger that you can get to touch down to the wall and then we're going to pick up just our thumbs three times so you're going to lift your thumb 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 and then you're going to move to your pointer. So pointer lifts, pointer, pointer. Good. Middle finger, lift, lift, and lift. Good. And trying to keep those other fingers still making really good contact. Ring finger's a little tricky. Here we go. Ring finger lifts. It might not lift as high as the thumb, but you still lift it up as much as you can while pressing down into the other fingers. Third time. Here we go. Good. Set it back down. And we'll go to the pinkies. So pinky lift and down. Pinky, down, pinky, down, 
Good. Let the hands come down from the walls. Give the hands a nice gentle squeeze and release, squeeze and release. Good. And then we're going to stretch into our wrists here a little bit more. So we're going to bring our hands to the wall and we're going to turn our fingers in towards one another. So this is going to get a nice stretch through our wrists. And as you press down through your fingers, your middle fingers are pointing towards one another. Just gently bring your shoulders over to one side and then to the other. And you'll notice where you feel that stretch. Probably, I mean, throughout the fingers, right? Maybe more specifically through the middle finger, through the palm of the hand. And you're trying to keep your the heel of your wrist down, the heel of your hand down because sometimes you want to roll and take it up off of the wall. You want to try and keep it down as you shift your shoulders to one side and then shift your shoulders to the other side and just notice how you feel the stretch. Good. We'll go ahead, come back to center, roll the wrists, give your hands a nice little squeeze open, squeeze open, roll, roll. Good, hands back to the wall. We're gonna turn the fingers out this time. So fingers, middle fingers pointing out away from each other, the heels of the hands pointing towards each other, fingers spread nice and wide. And once again, just gentle rock to either side. And you get to control how much pressure you put here, right? So if you're not feeling it, you can take your shoulders a little bit more, but if this is a lot, maybe your shoulders are just moving very slightly from one side to the other, because just being here like this, with your hands on the wall turned out, maybe that's enough of a stretch and that's fine. You do what works best for your wrists, your hands. Good, one more breath. And then we'll gently take the hands off the wall, shake them out, give them a little shake, open and close. It's a lot of, lot of work for our hands right away, right? So give them a little bit of a roll. We're going to do one more, and this one might be a weird one. We're going to take the backs of our hands to the wall this time. So your fingers drop down, kind of like you're in a zombie walk, but then you're just going to press the backs of the hands, the knuckles, into the wall. And you get to, again, choose how much, right? Maybe just your knuckles come to the wall and your wrists don't quite reach. That is fine. You work with your wrists. My wrists aren't coming down to the wall, but I'm feeling plenty of a stretch through my forearms. You just breathe and you figure out what works best for your arms, your wrists, your hands. You have one more breath here. Good, gently roll the hands down. Again, roll them out, open and close, reset. Very good. All right, and our most favorite one. We did all of that in preparation for our hand to the wall. Fingers nice and spread. Heel of the hand is at your shoulder height. Got your torso stacked up over your hips, middle finger pointing up. Maybe you feel it right away. And then we turn the elbow crease to face forward. And we take that shoulder and we gently press it down from the ear. Good. And you breathe here. We aren't going to hold it as long as we typically do because we've already done quite a bit of wrist stretching, but we are going to breathe here for two more full breaths. Take another breath in, breath out. Good. Gently let that hand come down off the wall. <sighs> Open and close very gently. Roll the wrist. Roll that right shoulder a couple of circles back, just the right shoulder. Good, one more. And then forwards with the right shoulder. Good. Very good. All right. And then so that I don't have my back to you, you can keep using your same wall. I think I'm going to have my back to you no matter where I end up, right? All right, we'll use this one over here. Other side, feet planted. Middle finger pointing up, that elbow crease twists to point forward, and we find ourselves dropping that shoulder down and noticing the difference from this side to the other side. Notice how, how this shoulder feels, how this hand, the wrist, the fingers, 
how they feel on this side compared to the other side. And again, I said, we're not gonna hold this one for super, super long, but we are breathing here. We have three more breaths. Good, two more. Letting go of some of that tension. Last big breath here. And gently let left fingertips come down off of the wall. Open and close the wrists a few times and make your way back to your mat. Good, we got our hands very, very well stretched this morning. Good, shake them out. And we'll go ahead, inhale, bring the arms up overhead. Exhale, forward fold, bringing palms through heart center, folding all the way down. Good, inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Hands come to the mat this time, bending those knees, walking the feet back to a downward facing dog. Finding your down dog, pedal one foot and then the other down towards the earth. And then find just a breath of stillness as your heels reach towards the earth. They don't have to meet the earth, just towards the earth. Hips nice and high, chest reaching back towards your thighs. And then gently go ahead, come down to all fours. Good. Finding your all fours, getting yourself situated, maybe even turning your pointer fingers to face the top of the mat and turning your middle fingers just slightly out towards the top corners of your mat. That helps again with the wrists. So tops of the feet down, inhale to our cow pose. Tailbone reaching up, gaze reaching up and exhale into your cat pose. Press the floor away. Good. Inhale to cow. And exhale to cat. Move at your own pace here. Find your cat cow. <coughs> Ooh, excuse me. <laughs> Good thing. You're practicing from home, huh? Sneezes these days are scary. When you're out in public and somebody sneezes, everybody has a moment of panic. Good, one more cat cow. And we will meet back at a neutral spine. If there are any other movements that you wanna take, feel free to take them now. Maybe toss in a child's pose, whatever works. We'll meet back at a neutral spine. So with that neutral spine, our gaze is right down at our thumbs, so the back of our head is in alignment with our spine. And we'll go ahead and we're gonna send left leg out back behind us, flex toes, find your balance. When you're ready, right arm reaches. Good. We have eight taps here today. Eight taps for, we got eight, seven, six, good, five, four, three, two, use those glutes, one, and down, good. All right, switching over to the other side, nice spinal balance, reaching right leg far out back behind us, pulling in at the belly button when you're ready, left arm long, good. Finding that balance first, and then we'll go into eight taps. We got eight, seven, six, five, pulling at the belly button, four, three, two, and one. Good, come down. Very good. Take a cat cow, reset the spine, and we'll go ahead and come into a downward facing dog. Finding your downward facing dog. Take a few breaths here. And then we'll walk our feet up to meet our hands. Coming into forward fold at the top of your mat. Let your head drop. Hands can rest beside you or on your legs, wherever works. 
and then go ahead, inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, rolling up, reaching up when you get there, arms reach. And exhale as you bring the palms down to heart center. Good. Finding your Tadasana, once again, your mountain pose at the top of your mat. Feet nice and firm on the ground beneath you. Shoulders roll back and down, tall spine. We're going to try and keep this tall spine throughout all of our standing poses here. So we'll go ahead and start with left leg stepping back, coming into our warrior one. So as we step back into our warrior one, hips aim to the top of the mat, bending into front knee, squaring those hips up as best that you can towards the top of the mat, and then growing up out of the hips, nice tall spine, arms reach. Good. Both feet pressing down into the earth, feeling especially the outer edge of your left foot pressing down. Good. From here, we're gonna find our humble warrior. We'll go ahead and take palms to heart center. Inhale here and exhale as you collapse the elbows together and hinge forward, folding to the inside of your right knee, allowing maybe even your head to drop as you look back towards your left big toe. As you do that, you really have to pull into center to find your balance. Good, squeezing especially through the glutes, the core, letting the head drop. Find one more breath. Inhale, draw yourself up, press down into the earth, reach the arms up overhead. Good. We'll go ahead, inhale, straighten through our front leg, and we're gonna find our, our um, modified pyramid pose here. So you can take the hands to the hips, tall spine, and without moving the feet, we're just gonna hinge forward as far as feels comfortable. Just for one breath, you're dropping right hip backwards in space, left hip forwards in space. And then we're gonna inhale, bring ourselves right back up. That was it, right? We'll bend into that front knee. We're gonna reach the arms up for warrior one once again. And then we're gonna open into warrior two, adjusting the feet as you need to, to turn the hips and shoulders to the long edge of the mat keeping right knee over right ankle. Arms reach long. Good. We're gonna go ahead and come into our side angle. So we'll bring right elbow to our right knee, left arm reaching high. We're gonna do three circles in both directions for our guitar player here. So we'll go ahead, reach the fingers, left fingers forward to the top of the mat, sweep them down and back. Inhale them back up. Exhale, sweep down. Inhale, sweep up. Exhale, sweep down. Inhale, sweep up. Good, switch directions. Exhale, sweep backwards and down. Inhale, sweep up. Exhale, sweep back and down. Inhale, up. Last one, exhale, sweep down. And as you inhale, sweep up, bring yourself to warrior two. Very good. We'll go ahead, flip the front palm. Inhale, reverse our warrior, taking what some people call peaceful warrior, reaching back, left hand down the left thigh, right hand reaching back behind you, nice side body stretch, and then back to warrior two. Good. From here, we'll go ahead, inhale, straighten through our front leg, we'll reach right arm nice and long, and then drop down to our triangle pose, right hand to right shin, or you bring your chair in and you roll up and open, reaching left arm to the sky. Good. And we'll go ahead, bring ourselves all the way back up on an inhale. Exhale, step to the top of the mat. We're going to hover the left knee at 90 degrees, arms reaching up. So we'll go ahead, step up, arms reach up, 90 degree hold for one full breath. And exhale, palms to heart center, lower the foot. Good. All right. Other side, here we go. Right leg steps back, coming into our warrior one. Right toes slightly out, hips aiming to the top of the mat, adjust as needed, and arms reach up. Good, find your breath here, find that nice tall spine. Stack yourself right over your hips and grow tall, arms reach. Very good. Inhale, exhale, draw palms to heart center. 
inhale, collapse the elbows, exhale, hinge and fold, war or humble warrior on the other side. Maybe even dropping the crown of the head down, look back at your right big toes, pull into center to keep yourself nice and balanced, left glute nice and firm to hold yourself up here, core gently pulling in to keep yourself from falling over, and then inhale, draw yourself back up, press down into the floor, reach up, warrior one. Good. Opening up into warrior two, adjust the feet, hips turn open, trying to keep that ankle or the ankle right beneath the knee, arms reach nice and long. Good. Both feet pressing down nice and firmly into the earth. We'll start by taking left elbow to left knee, taking our side angle. Right arm reaching high to the sky. We'll go ahead, sweep forward for three circles. Inhale, reaching it back up. Exhale, sweep the fingertips forward. Inhale, reaching it back up. Exhale, sweep down. Inhale, sweep up. That was three switching directions. Exhale, sweep back. Inhale, sweep up. Exhale, back and down. Inhale, up. Last one, exhale down, inhale all the way back up, warrior two. Good. Flip the front palm, inhale as you reverse, taking your reverse or peaceful warrior here. Good. And back to warrior two. I know what I forgot on the other, on this side. We forgot our pyramid pose. That's what it was. I was forgetting something. We'll go ahead, straighten through. Our left leg, we'll work it in here. Reach left arm down and find our triangle first. Rolling up and open through right shoulder, right arm reaching. Good, find your breath. Good. And then draw yourself all the way back up to standing. We're gonna shorten our stand, we're gonna turn our back toes in just ever so slightly like we we're coming into our warrior one legs. Turn the hips forward. Lengthen here, and just for a breath, we're hinging to find just a very brief modified pyramid pose. Hinging forward until you get that stretch through your left hamstring. Left hip backwards in space, right hip forwards in space. And then go ahead, inhale, bring yourself back up to standing. Arms reach. We're stepping right foot to the top. We're gonna bring it into that balancing 90. So step it forward, maybe tap it down as you bring it up to 90 for one breath and then lower down. Good. All right, we got a little out of order, but we're still doing all right. All right, our balancing section. We are to our balancing. We are going to take our chair over to the wall. We are going to practice one of my favorite poses, um, balancing half moon. And I'm trying to think if you're gonna be able to see me well enough if I'm on this wall, I think we're going to make it work. So, you're going to have the chair in front of you. You're going to step about a foot behind it. You want the back of the chair against the wall. We're going to use the seat um, as our prop here. We're going to be about, um, let's call it six inches off of the wall, maybe a little bit more. Your foot is, your right foot is going to be our strong foot here. So right foot is gonna press down into the ground. You might wanna even scoot a little bit closer because you're gonna end up having your hip up against the wall. We're gonna take our right hand and we're gonna bring it to the chair. Left hand to left hip. Maybe, uh, oh, your foot is about, let's say 12 inches, one ruler behind your chair. So there's a, a gap of 12 inches between your chair and your big toe. And pushing down into your right hand, you're going to go ahead and roll up and open, bringing your left foot back behind you, and you're going to roll onto the wall, reaching maybe left hand up towards the ceiling. You're going to lean on the wall, and your left toes, as you can see, are pointing right straight out in front of you, same direction your belly button is. You're opening up through your hips, and you're using the wall to help you balance. And you breathe here. Your right toes, 
the standing foot toes are going to want to turn to face the same direction as your left toes, but your goal is to keep those right toes pointing the, the direction your head is pointing. Good. We find another breath here, and then we'll gently come down, stand on up, roll the wrists. Good. Now to the other side. Hmm. I'm going to switch walls here. You stay where you are. We're just going to switch to the other side. And this is the other side. All right. Left foot, 12 inches behind your chair. Left hand to the chair. Right hand to the right hip. Your uh, right hip is ready to be reaching up to the wall or touching the wall. And as you press down through your right hand and your right foot, you pick left foot, left foot and left hand, your right foot comes up back behind you and you roll those right toes to face out away from the wall. And then you can set your hip on the wall, right foot nice and long, rolling up through that right shoulder, you can reach right arm up. Good. And this is your balancing half moon. And it's fitting because, well actually I guess half moon isn't fitting. We have a whole moon, a full moon coming up. Good. Trying to keep those left toes pointing the direction your crown of your head is pointing. We have another breath here. And then gently bring yourself down. Stand on up. Shake it out. Good. All right. Shake out those hands. Bring your chair back to your mat. We're going to practice our tree pose. <sighs> Go ahead, find your left foot as your strong foot to start. Coming to the right toes, turn the knee out to the side, and then you either have kickstand, ankle, calf, wherever feels most comfortable. You're working on Eventually, being able to let go of the chair, we've started our tree pose wherever you are. If you fall out of it, that's fine. Tall spine, just like when we were in our Tadasana, our mountain pose. Feel the arch of your left foot lift. Feel the engagement up through the left leg, hips and spine nice and tall, stacking right on top of the hips. Shoulders back and down, crown of the head reaching. So this is our our Tadasana body, even though we're in our tree pose, maybe your arms reach, maybe your hand is still holding on, but you still have that tallness through the spine. You're not rounding through your shoulders. Standing up nice and tall, belly button pulling back to spine. Maybe your branches are raised. Maybe your hands are at heart center. Whatever works. Oops. Watch out for the fans above you if you have one. Our Florida room here has a lower ceiling than normal, so that's why I can reach the fan. <laughs> One more big breath in, and exhale, lower down. Good. All right. I think that was like somewhere between 65 and 70 seconds, so we are working it up. We're getting there. Switch to the other side. You have the opportunity to just spin around on your mat, but I'm not gonna spin around and put my back to the camera here. So we'll go ahead, right foot, strong foot, left toes turn out, and we are ready to start our tree on the other side. So just like we did on the other side, you're thinking about that right foot arch lifting. So maybe pick up the toes and set them down, get the arch to lift and then feel that length and engagement reach up through the leg, leg nice and tall, your hips nice and even, and then feel your spine grow up out of your hips. Feel your shoulders roll back and down. Feel the crown of the head press up towards the ceiling and belly button draw in to let your head grow up. The more your belly button pulls back, the more your crown can reach up. Maybe you grow your branches Maybe you still hold on to the chair, whatever works. Maybe you're just at the stage where you're just hovering above the chair, testing it out. You find your breath. If you 
fall out of it, you come back to it. Tall spine, finding that Tadasana spine for one more big breath in and exhale, lower down. Good. Again, somewhere between 65 and 70 seconds, we're doing it. Coming in front of our chair, we've got eight squats to get down. We're holding for three seconds. Feet, hip distance. Here we go. We've got our first for one, two, three, and stand. And two, two, three, stand. Arms can be out and optionally. Three, two, three, stand. You can be on your hips. Four, two, three, stand. Good. Five, two, three, stand. Hips reaching back. Six, two, three, stand. It can be a heart center too. Seven, two, three, stand. Last one. Here we go. Eight, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Keep holding eight. Keep holding nine and ten. Thighs are burning. Sit down. Ah, tippy tappy the toes. Find a nice tall spine. Little tippy tappies. Tippy tappy to the sides and together, forwards, center, to the left, center, back, center, to the right, center, relax. Good. All right, we're gonna do uh, our back bend to start, followed by a gentle twist, followed by a forward fold. So, our back bend, hands come to the chair behind us, we allow our weight, the weight of our torso to lean forward, hinging at the hips. And as we do so, we're going to let our arms roll our shoulders back and allow our collarbones to lead forward as our shoulders pull back, finding an arching through the back. Maybe even finding that arching through the tailbone as well. And as you let the chest and the weight of the body fall forward, your hands are the locks to bring you into your back bend here. So you're breathing, finding openness through the chest, finding openness through the heart center. Maybe your gaze goes up and you find some openness through your throat as well, through your neck. Breathing here for one more breath. And then gently pulling back up to center. Good. We'll go ahead and take a twist this time. We're going to start right hand to left knee. Left hand scoops behind, holds onto the chair, sitting up, inhale, and exhale, gentle twist. Find your breath. Good. Coming back through center. We'll take it to the other side. Left hand to right knee, right hand to the chair. Inhale. And exhale, twist. Good. Finding your breath. Good. Coming back through center. Good. We'll take our forward fold here. Option for forward fold. You can always take your feet a little bit wider as we fold to give yourself room to fold forward if forward fold isn't otherwise comfortable. So you can always test that out this time as well. So sitting up nice and tall, gently allow yourself to fold forward, maybe with wider legs, maybe legs at our normal hip distance, and allow yourself to drop the head, let the torso rest wherever it lands. Maybe nod the head yes, shake the head no. Find another breath here. Good, rolling up, coming back to a seat, sitting up nice and tall. We're gonna scooch a little bit forwards on our chair. <clears throat> We're going to come into our chair boat. Just one round of it, just one round, we can do it. So for your chair boat, you're sitting slightly forward on your chair, and you're going to allow yourself to keep a tall spine. Same thing, right? 
This is our Tadasana spine. So our spine is growing up tall through the hips, right from the hips. Shoulders roll back and down and the crown of the head reaching up. So as you find that tall Tadasana spine, you're going to tilt it backwards, coming to the sit bones, and you're going to maybe holding onto the chair, maybe floating the arms. You're going to pick up the toes, and maybe you just pick up one and then the other. That is fine. If this is your level so that you can protect your lower back, this is your level. If you can do them both at the same time, you're holding, you're keeping a tall spine, shoulders rolled back and down belly button pulling back, right? Either you're tapping or you're holding. So three, two, one. Take a little forward fold. Good, come back up. That was a good one. All right, chair boat, we got it. Done, out of the way. Here we go. We've got eight rounds of squats to stand up. Chairs beneath you, feet, hip distance ankles underneath your knees. When you come up, you're keeping a nice hinge at the hips. And you're not putting it all on your knees by sending your knees super far forward. Find where your hands are gonna end up. And here we go. Up for one, two, three, and down. There we go. Two, two, three, and down. Up again, four, two, three, down. I think I skipped three. <laughs> Did I just skip three, two, three, and down. Just jumping back to five. Five, two, three, and down. We're just counting out of order. It's no big deal. Six, two, three, and down. Up again. Seven, two, three, and down. Last one. Here we go. Eight, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten. Extend, reach up, reach, reach, reach. Tip to the side. Tip to the other side. Good. And back to center. Excellent. So we're coming back to our wall, bringing our mats to our wall. And I decided I'm going to use this wall for my shavasana. It's a bigger wall, more room. And we get our mats up against our wall. And we're going to do our arms. So I didn't think that through because I'm going to use this wall for the arms before we come down. Good. With our backs up against the wall, we'll inhale and bring those arms up. And exhale them down. Inhale them up. Exhale them down. One more. Inhale up. And exhale down. Good. From here, we're going to do our reverse clock. So both hands are at six. We are going to take our left hand to five, four, three, two, one, twelve. We're going to keep it at twelve. Other hand is going to come to seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Good, coming back down, we're starting with our right hand again. 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, left to 1, 2, 3, 4, at 5, and 6. Good. Roll the wrists a little bit. And we're going to do our wall squat here. So we'll go ahead. I know we just did our squats, but we have not done a lot of wall squatting. So go ahead and get your feet. If you don't feel comfortable doing it on your mat because you feel like your mat's going to slide, definitely do it on the floor. We'll go ahead and slide down. We're just going to be here for a little bit. Knees over ankles. So if you find your feet way back behind your knees, scoot your feet out so that your ankles are below the knees. Our backs are on the wall. We're going to be here for five, four, three, maybe give them a little tap, two, 
and one, go ahead, gently push up, stand up. My shirt did not slide up the wall, so I couldn't just push up. All right, shake them out, and we'll go ahead and come down to the floor. So however works best, coming down to all fours, heels out to the side, swinging to the front, scooch to the top of the mat, and hip up against that wall, roll back and down, swinging the heels up. And with our feet up the wall, we're gonna go ahead and do our hip stretch here. So we're gonna flex our left foot. Well, we'll point and flex our feet first. So point, flex, point, flex, point, flex. Good, roll the ankles in circles. Good, roll in the other way. Good, and now with bring both feet to the wall, or the heels to the wall, flex the left toes a lot, flex the right toes a lot. Take your right leg, and we're gonna cross it over our left knee. So we're gonna take the ankle, right ankle to the outside of that left knee. And as we are here, keeping a little bend in that left knee, so don't let it hyperextend. Keep a little bend in that left knee. You can take your both hands and bring them to the right kneecap and just gently press the knee away. And then you can maybe play with how much you bend through the left knee and that gets more of a stretch. If you want even more of a stretch, you can bring a lot of bend to the knee and put the foot on the wall. And you breathe. You breathe as you're here. Breathing into that right hip. Flex foot. Good. We'll go ahead. If you bent the left knee, straighten it up, uncross the right. Good. Bring both feet to the wall and windshield wiper side to side. Good. Only as far as feels comfortable. And then legs go back up the wall, flex through the right foot, flex through the left foot, keeping left foot nice and flexed. Bend at the knee and cross the ankle over right knee this time. So, Keeping that little bend to your right knee, flexed left foot, hands can come to the left knee, gently pressing away. Good. If you want more, you bring more of a bend to your right knee. That will intensify it quite a bit. You're breathing into your left hip here. Good, one more breath. And then we'll go ahead, mindfully, if you have that right knee bent, straighten it back out, uncross the left, bring both feet to the wall, bring them wide apart, and then windshield wiper this time with wide feet. Just as far as feels comfortable on the hips, getting a little bit of movement, good. And then we'll go ahead and bring our feet hip distance apart. And we're going to just do our pelvic floor exercise here. So hands can be on the knees. All we're going to do is press down through the feet to engage through our glutes and our uh, pelvic floor muscles. And as we do so, we press down into the feet, engage through the quads, and just curl the lower tailbone off of the mat. So we'll go ahead and curl up. Hold, still breathing, of course. You're just holding the pose. You're not holding your breath. You're still breathing for three, two, and one lower back down. Good. Take a moment, relax maybe, windshield wiper, and then one more. Here we go, pressing down through the feet, engaging through the quads, engaging through the glutes, and gently tuck up under Tuck the tailbone up, curl the pelvis, tilt the whole pelvis up towards the ceiling. Good. Tilting it, holding, pressing down through the feet for three, for two, for one, and lower. Good. Windshield wiper once again. And then we'll go ahead, send the legs. Oh, wait. 
cobbler's pose or butterfly. Bottoms of feet come together, knees open out to the sides, hands can gently rest on the inner thighs, the inner knees. If you want more of a stretch, you just gently press more into the knees, but don't push yourself beyond your limit here. Let the feet come down as far as, com as is comfortable on the knees, and you breathe. Breathe into the groin stretch. Breathe into those inner legs, inner thighs. Good, one more breath here. And then gently bring the knees back together. Now is time for our legs up the wall. Find your comfort, the place where you're comfortable for your Shavasana. I'm scooting myself closer to the wall. I felt a little far away from it, so I'm just scooching a little closer. Hands can rest on your belly, on your thighs, beside you, out to the side, whatever works best. We're going to be here for a few moments, allowing yourself to relax here. So let your feet relax. No need to hold on to them. No need to flex. Just let them flop. Let them be heavy. And we'll go ahead, gently allow the eyes to close. Notice if you're holding on to the jaw and relax through the jaw. Notice if you're holding on to your facial muscles especially the muscles in between your eyebrows or forehead and relax that or your eyelid muscles. Sometimes we close our eyes a little more forcefully than we need to relax through those muscles. Thank you. 
allow yourself to take one big breath in and out. Find gentle movement into the toes and into the ankles. Find gentle movement into the fingertips and the wrists. And then if it works, reach the arms up overhead for a big full body stretch. And then roll over onto whichever side is more comfortable for just a breath in fetal position. And then gently press yourself up into all fours, taking your time, making your way into all fours. Take a cat cow when you arrive. And then make your way into a downward facing dog, taking your time. Go ahead, walk your hands back to your feet or your feet up to your hands, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Side out, forward fold. Inhale, roll all the way up. Arms reach up overhead. And exhale, bring the palms down to heart center. Good. Take a moment, check in with your body, check in with your breath. And then we'll go ahead and end our class as we always do. We'll go ahead and bring our thumbs up to, up to our foreheads for wisdom, to our lips for truth, and to our hearts for compassion. The light in me honors the light in you. Namaste. Thanks for practicing with me today. Miss you all tremendously, and we'll see you soon. Bye.